is NVIDIA developing a new chip for cryptocurrency mining? And what are our reactions regarding the Nintendo Direct from the 17th of this month? Well, more on that on the Tech Summit Podcast. I'm Francisco. I'm Chris. And we have a lot to talk about. A lot of hot takes today. Sure. So, <laughs> over here, I actually have a lot of important information. But before that, because I always forget this portion, social media is going to be right down here. If you're watching and if you're listening, do make sure to check out the description for the rest of the social media, such, such as YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and things of the like. Now let's dive right in. Yeah, there you go. Now you get started. Okay. <laughs> so you got the NVIDIA news. Hit us. Yes. Oh, once, hold on. Oh, yep. It is the NVIDIA corner. <laughs> I left the button completely untouched for you. <laughs> Thank you. Just so that you could do that. Um, I actually don't see us needing an AMD shame corner anytime soon, but... We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see with time. So... The article that I found is actually from CNBC, and this is actually uh, concerning and also, you know, like, I should, I feel like I should be happy about this, but I'm more concerned than anything because back in 2018, something very similar to this happened, but uh, I'm, I'm going to dive right in. So it says, NVIDIA, on Thursday, announced it will release a new series of semiconductors specifically for mining Ether, the second largest digital cryptocurrency. The new chip type is called CMP, or a Cryptocurrency Mining Processor. The first cards will go on sale in March, an NVIDIA spokesman said. Ether mining is a process in which computers solve complicated math programs to help the Ethereum cryptocurrency network run, in exchange, miners get Ether, the digital coin, and runs on the Ethereum network. Ether hit a record high on Thursday, up over 160% year to date to over nine, uh, sorry, $1,914, which is, I mean, pretty high for just one. And now, what I mostly wanted to comment on here is just the fact that, uh, there, there, there were rumors that Nvidia was going to was going to do something like this, and that they were going to sell it uh, for like a good amount of cash. Like it wasn't going to be a cheap card, which you know it makes sense if you're going to be using it for mining. But then uh, that design that was rumored at the time, you know, like back in 2018 and stuff, was actually a design that wasn't much more efficient than the your usual uh, GTX cards at the time. Mm. So uh, people did not see a value in that and they just kept buying GTX cards anyway <laughs> because at the end of the day, those were still cheaper. Um, and it seems like they're planning on, on doing something very, very s similar. So my, my biggest concern here is really just like, first, how much is it gonna cost? Is it going to be that much more efficient than a regular graphics card at uh, mining Ethereum in, in particular? And just, is it going to be worth it to cryptocurrency miners to go with a dedicated card for that rather than just getting a, an RTX card by this point? No. No? No. Um, so what I'm trying to figure out is Ethereum. How much does it take to mine it compared to say something like Bitcoin? Like, how much power does it take? Because, say, for example, if you're trying to do Bitcoin, it costs more to mine a Bitcoin than it does, like, it, you know, get you money in return because because the amount of electricity that it uses. So for a card to really be worth cryptocurrency mining of any type, again, it's possible Ethereum is, you know, a lot more efficient. But in general, it's like you need a extremely energy efficient card. It's not enough to be a strong card because if that strong card is taking up that much electricity and raising up your electric bill, it ends up being a moot point. Yeah. At that point, you're just investing on the hopes that Ethereum's value goes further up than however much it costs you to actually mine that coin. Mm -hmm. At this point, Ethereum is not that valuable in comparison to Bitcoins. Um, sitting at just a little bit below $2,000, one Bitcoin was at how much uh, j just recently? Like, like wasn't it around the 30,000s? No, it's around the 40s or 50s. Wow, so it's only gone up, actually. Yeah. Since then, wow. 
Okay. Uh, that, that's because uh, Elon Musk invested in uh, Bitcoin as a part of Tesla expenditures, I believe. <laughs> Something around that. Of course. Every time he does anything, it, it just becomes a meme worthy and everybody kind of yeah. f- follows along. I, I think it's pretty funny, but, you know, be careful with, with what decisions you end up making. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, if mining, if mining a Bitcoin still may not be so profitable... Or, or maybe it is at this point, considering that it is forty thousand dollars. It's not. No, I do not believe it's going to be that profitable to mine a Bitcoin. The, uh, the smarter thing would just be to buy and invest in Bitcoin, and then just you know, hope you know, buy it. Is it almost like a GameStop stock? Buy at the dip, sell it when it gets higher. You know. Yeah. Like that's the better thing to do with Bitcoin at this point. Either that, or like back when Bitcoin was a joke, and you had like thirty Bitcoin in a little wallet sometime in like twenty eleven. You know. Try and find that computer or that hard drive that has that. That's that, like those are the better things to do than to try and mine Bitcoin at this point. I see. Yeah. Um. I I have actually heard uh, of apparently one guy that actually found one Dogecoin in his uh in like a pretty old hard drive. Uh. So he definitely made sure to keep that around. A Dogecoin. Dogecoin. Or Bitcoin? No, Dogecoin. A Dogecoin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's. That worth more now, um, not exactly that much more. I think one Dogecoin is still around five or six cents. <laughs> I thought it was worth a lot more than that. No, no, no. The the big meme for Dogecoin was to try and get it to a dollar. That's hilarious. And the peak <laughs> that I've seen so far is around eight cents that it reached. I think now is the time to invest in Dogecoin. I have Doge- I have Dogecoin. Oh, you do? Yes, I have a thousand Dogecoin. I mean, you might as well. So, like, how much was that? Like, uh, that was eight about bucks? no, no, no. A thousand Dogecoin came out to about, I think, sixty-seven dollars. Six, six, sixty-seven. Sixty-seven dollars. Mm, so it must have been higher then. It was around six point seven cents uh-huh. times a thousand sixty-seven. Oh, I was timing <laughs> times a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like out of it. <laughs> no, uh, and, and Dogecoin has gone down since then, but mm. uh, you know. That's more of a long-term thing. Honestly, yeah. most of my investments at this point are, in fact, long-term. Not to come back to this well of the uh, investment. You know, we again, we are not uh, investment summit, but uh, there are, of course, those GameStop hearings that have been going on in the past couple of days. Uh, Tell me more. Okay, so yeah, there there was uh, they had a uh, live streaming of the uh, GameStop hearing. Uh, Robin Hood CEO got raked over the coals. Uh, Citadel and Melvin CEOs were also there and they didn't get as many questions. You had a couple of people who would give them, it was like playing dodgeball. It was like playing dodgeball. Okay. You have like a couple of your Congress people who are giving them like soft throws. And so they're easily able to dodge the question or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then you have one Congress person. Um, and, Again, this is not a political podcast whatsoever, but I'm going to guess that you can imagine which ones I might be talking about who just go like missile pelting right at them. Yeah. And they get absolutely hit, just completely like smashed with it. Um, But of course, the big uh, main event that everyone was really there for, I mean, a lot of people were there to see Robin Hood CEOs, you know, squirm around. But the uh, biggest uh, thing otherwise was deep in value <laughs> <laughs> otherwise known <laughs> that's going to be a fun one to use otherwise known as uh, roaring kitty on youtube or i believe keith keith go no i don't remember his his full name at the moment i'm very sorry that's fine but roaring worry. kitty yes the, the man behind this whole thing who invested in gamestop long long ago and has so far been the biggest winner out of the whole thing and you know he peaked at 47 million dollars when gamestop was at its peak um mm-hmm. and uh something that was worth noting is that he was the most honest person in the entire thing because robin hood's so, so the meme coming out of this whole thing is that robin hood ceo uh was very much like you know, I mean, anytime he was asked a question, he would be like, well, first, Congressperson, thank you very much for that question. It's a very smart question to be asking. And then he'll quote, sign up, kind of go into like, this long diatribe about like, how he grew up somewhere and eventually maybe <laughs> somewhere is the answer. And like every single time the person would be like, give me a yes or a no, he'll just rewind the tape and start over. <laughs> Whereas with Boring Kitty, um, he was very much just like, yes or no, is this a thing? And he's like, yes. 
<laughs> That's it. He, he didn't he didn't go into any diatribes or anything like that. He was very like people were pointing out that he was the only honest person there because he was the only one who would give a straightforward answer, yes or no, mm-hmm. including the question of all questions at this value right now, would you be investing in this stock still? And he says, yes. Oh. He said he is still confident in GameStop going up. He is still bullish as ever, using his words. And of course, on record now, he did say, I like the stock. (laughs) And just to put his money where his mouth is, he finally came back to Reddit last night, posting his update. He's at $17 million now. Wow. And uh, he doubled his investment. Did he now? He bought more. He put his money where his mouth is, and he bought more. They asked him, are you really going to buy the share? Would you buy the share at this price? He said yes, and then he went and he did it. Wow. Okay. I I appreciate that. Uh, these okay. hearings are going to continue, naturally. Mm-hmm. This is not even close to over. Um, but that was a very interesting thing. I know there's a big sidetrack. I mean, I think that, that could actually help uh, the GameStop stock grow again. It's not impossible. Again, there's a lot of confidence that this guy is showing for GameStop, and mm-hmm. yeah, he absolutely rec- he's still he's still recommending to go in on it. Okay. Whereas a lot of people have said, you know, get out, uh, don't even bother, sell it, whatever it is, and he's just like, no, I'm, I'm still in. I mean, surprisingly, I've also been diamond hands when it comes to my stock because I spent too much on it. I don't want to let go of it you, right you know now. Me, I already sold mine, but yeah, understandably I will, so. I will I will admit at the current price that it is, which is I think it's in the low 40s. Um, I'm not ruling out the possibility of like buying another a share or two again, just because it would like bring the value overall value of my shares down, which mm-hmm. would therefore increase potential profits if it goes up. Okay. Like I don't rule it out, but of course it would only be within my actual financial means, which you know. Right. I mean, like forty bucks for a GameStop stock, considering how high it went at some point, it and it could eventually end up going back up. Uh, the, the day before the hearing, we also had uh, another CEO from uh, one of these investment companies, uh, you know, the, the, the apps, I mean, you know, the websites and apps, yeah. uh, who outright admitted that, uh, yes, the stock would have gone into the thousands if Robinhood did not halt trading and everyone else followed suit. He fully admitted to market manipulation, and the anchor was kind of like, uh, is he supposed to say that? <laughs> so like, he's not going to jail? Probably not. Uh-huh. <laughs> Probably not. But he fully he fully admitted that they absolutely shut the game off because you know the other side was winning too much. That, we we have that on record now. That's unbelievable. There is a clip of him saying this. This is absolutely despicable. Yes. The worst part is that he might actually get away with something like they this. They are going to get away with this. This is r- ridiculous. They're getting, absolutely getting away with this. But of course, something that is also not really what something that isn't getting away from us is, in fact, these cryptocurrency values because they're currently like really high up. I imagine they are going to come back down. No, yeah, yeah. So it always happens. Is it really worth mining cryptocurrency? So I don't know if there's really going to be a big audience for these Nvidia chips. Right. I don't think so either because, again, like it's it's really going to be a price to performance ratio kind of deal here, like. These cards are not more efficient than your usual RTX or DTX cards. Then, oh, and end up costing more. Yeah. Than those cards, then definitely it's not going going to sell. People are just going going to want to go for those uh, gaming cards because it's not going to make a difference and they're going to be cheaper. So, in the end, you know, Nvidia really has to make this worth it for people. And when it comes to gr- when it comes to cryptocurrency, it's extremely volatile. I mean, like Bitcoins, for instance. They've been at, ex- at insanely high prices and pretty low. Like, And by pretty low, uh, from recent memory, I just remember like 500-ish. And then right now, we are like in the 40s of thousands. So, you know, that could happen to pretty much any cryptocurrency. I'm check this now. I'm just yeah, gonna, sure. Just want to make sure. Sure, go ahead. Continue. Okay, so... We're going to give a much more a- accurate answer to that, but I'm pretty sure that every other cryptocurrency uh, is still very vulnerable to this kind of volatility. Like, it's not going going to sustain its value for too long, and it's eventually going to come back down. I mean, right now, like, just the fact that Ethereum reached 1914 it it seems like that's a record high, actually. In fact... According to this article from CNBC, it is, since it did go up by 160% uh, year year to, to date. Okie dokie. What's up? Uh, first off, 
Bitcoin has not been five hundred dollars for the last five years now. Okay. Um, it w- what you're thinking of is that time when it peaked, and all the GPUs are really hard to find. When it peaked around fourteen, nineteen, twenty thousand or so, mm-hmm. and then dipped down afterwards into maybe three thousand territory. Okay. It is currently trending at the all time high of fifty seven thousand. <laughs> And continuously, <laughs> so we really continuously it. going up. In the past month, it has gone up twenty two thousand dollars. Maybe we should have put a couple bucks into that. Maybe we should have. I maybe we should have. I think now it's way outside of our budget. But <laughs> oh no, no, not to buy an entire coin. You don't buy an entire coin. No. <laughs> you buy part of a coin. <laughs> of course, you but get it, a molecule of a coin. Even then, like, wouldn't that be super expensive? No. No? If we're talking about certain apps, like the one that we were just talking a whole lot of junk about, yeah, uh, you can buy partial. Yeah, but like, can you just spend as much as you want, or isn't there a minimum there? I could do $20 of Bitcoin right now. $20, really? $20 worth of Bitcoin right now if I wanted to. Really? Which would be like 0.00001%, but... It's something. But I could do that, yeah, if I wanted to. Okay. I mean, like, if that stock grows... The value of your molecule the only would still grow. Re- the only reason why I'm not, pro- I'm, I'm, I'm very much thinking about not doing it is because it has been going continuously up this entire time. It is probably going to start coming down. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to be a fool once again because my <laughs> current investments and portfolio after uh, getting out of GameStop has been a sea of red. Aww. It has been a sea of red <laughs> with a single company that has been uh, keeping me afloat, relatively speaking, but I'm very much deep in the red on all my investments with the exception of that one stock and i'm not going to disclose what it is just because i don't want to actually get in trouble but got it got it no worries now with that said i don't think this is going to work out but let's hope for the best right it feels like nvidia is taking a lot of these weird steps it's a lot of weird steps and there's not really much rhyme or reason behind it while they continue to neglect the one thing they need to be focusing on that is stock of the actual cars that sell right yeah and you know like actually trying to stop bots uh, from just being able to buy them all up. Most importantly, because if everybody has a fair chance, even if it does sell out in a couple of minutes, if if it's actual people buying them, then I don't see many people complaining and having Well, yeah, preventing bots is definitely a big thing. But of course, you know, a better way to combat bots is just also have a decent amount of stock that, you know, a constant influx of stock coming through. If you are taking all of your resources and putting them into things like this GPU, which is going to have a very small niche market of people who basically don't realize that it's not worth mining cryptocurrency as opposed to investing in it. It's just going to go to waste. Versus, and as well as, of course, my favorite card, the GT1010, <laughs> which has, I don't see any market at all except for pre built <laughs> You know, if, if you take those resources that you're putting into those cards and put them into, like, continuous manufacturing of your 30 series... You know, I feel like you, we would see a light at the end of the tunnel for a lot of people when it comes to getting stock on these things. Yeah, yeah. So uh, once more, a lot to consider there. <laughs> o- ode to Nvidia. <laughs> That's right. But now let's move on to a happier topic, or well, a more controversial topic than than this one, and this is going to be the Nintendo Direct. Yes, Nintendo so, Direct. What was your your favorite game announced from this Nintendo Direct? Me? Yeah. Uh, ooh, good question. Yeah, tell me. I'm trying to remember everything off the top of my head right now. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, we have to note that uh, Nintendo Direct did come around, and apparently, I think it was the most viewed thing Nintendo has done online, by the way. Like, I think we had up to 3 million people viewing what at was the going same on. time. Yeah. Wow. As it was going on. And of course, we should also note that uh, Francisco from Tech Summit here actually did uh, a reactions thread where he had his lo fi music playing during half the thing. <laughs> um, Until somebody asked me to turn it off. I was <laughs> wondering, it's like, is he really going to play this the entire time? <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't hear this. Oh, man. I actually, I actually like, kind of forgot that that was going on around the start. And then somebody asked me to like turn that off. I was like, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. There's actually music playing here. Boop. Right. Yeah. Um, and of course, a lot of people were really upset because. The tradition for Nintendo Direct seems to be that people get their expectations way too high and then naturally get upset when the cure for diabetes is not included (laughs) as one of the uh, launch titles for the next Switch Pro. What a lovely reference. (laughs) You know, it's like... Okay, so, so 
granted, there was a lot of things that we were hoping for. It's like, yeah, you hope for Metroid Prime 4. Mm. You hope for Breath of the Wild 2. You hope for Bayonetta 3. But you don't expect those things. You don't... Well... You should not... <laughs> Breath of the Wild 2 is the only thing that you should have reasonably expected. And the fact is, rather than completely ignore it, they did come on and say, sorry, we don't have any news right now, but that is we will... We will have news later on this year. People are acting like Breath of the Wild 2 is just gone into the ether canceled. They outright said, we're going to have more news later this year. Yeah. The thing that a lot of people seem to have forgotten with the Nintendo Direct is that they said they're going to be focusing specifically on the first half or so of 2021. Mm-hmm. Yes, they did show some 2022 titles. Yeah. They did. Yeah. That was dumb. That was a little dumb. Splatoon 3 is pretty cool, but that was kind of dumb. Splatoon 3. Oh. But but at <laughs> was, the same time... I was more like, did, did we really need a Splatoon 3? <laughs> I am surprised that we are getting one before the next generation of Nintendo consoles, but I'm not going to complain either. I like Splatoon. But... Okay, fair. My, my thing is... My <laughs> thing is... Um, this is focused on the first half of 2021. Yeah. Even though, the, even though, again, they're also going as far as August for things like No More Heroes 3. Mm-hmm. Um, they did not say anything about the holiday season. People right. seem to have forgotten that they didn't say a single thing about the holiday season and that more likely than not, they'll probably have some sort of presentation around the time of E3 in June. Yeah. In fact, uh, I, I would expect... So it's usually not Nintendo themselves that announces Pokemon games, uh, unless it's like, you know, like a not-so-important Pokemon game. Like, when it comes to mainline Pokemon games, it does t- tend to be the Pokemon company that tends to have their own announcements and which they are going to have an event next week they are having already (laughs) they they said it a while ago post malone's performing remember we spoke about this on the last episode (laughs) yeah we did it but i i didn't realize it was going to be this soon it is the 27th i believe oh my goodness i'm okay they are have there is a pokemon event where they are more than likely going to announce any new games or projects there a release date for pokemon snap whatever (laughs) Pokemon. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so sixty dollars for Pokemon Snap. I didn't is... say sixty dollars for Pokemon. Oh, is it sixty dollars for Pokemon Snap? Come on, it's going to be sixty dollars. Probably going to be sixty dollars for Pokemon Snap. But yeah, come on. I but... mean, like, let's go Eevee and let's go Pikachu. But nevertheless, Cost 60. <laughs> but nevertheless, what I'm getting at is, y'all need to calm down. <laughs> you guys need to calm down. We are in uncertain times. And those uncertain times, don't touch that button, (laughs) deeply affects things like the games industry. We are going to be feeling those effects now. The reason why we didn't feel them as roughly last year is because most of those games were either complete or close to complete. Yeah, like those games were already in the works. Like they weren't developed within the course of just a few months. I can completely believe that something like Splatoon 3 was probably going to come out at the end of this year before it got delayed into next year. I can fully believe that. Sure. You know, it's not out of the question. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, I'm imagining one of your favorite games from this whole thing, uh, Triangle Strategy. Yeah. (laughs) Project Triangle Strategy. I mean, I was kind of lukewarm on it because I'm typically not a huge fan of tactics games, and this is a tactics game. But it does look a lot like Octopath. I loved Octopath. Oh, it's the same developers. Yeah, exactly. And same publisher, Square Enix. So either way, I think I'm going to end up going for it. But And yes, to that note, uh, your thoughts, which are completely... The opposite of a lot of people who were, you know, looking at this effect. Get into them. So, I mean, I was actually, uh, I did not see anything that I was expecting there. Like, my expectations were not met for for this direct. And that's not Nintendo's fault, of course. I just, I just thought that it was about time that we would see, you know, like, news on Breath of the Wild too. But we did get something, right? You know, like, just saying, just wait until later on this year. Right. And you're gonna get something, and we'll get to the and we'll get to the uh, alternative that we got in a moment. But yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Different perspectives are very important here. So, I'm a huge RPG guy, right? Mm-hmm. I love RPGs. I almost exclusively play RPGs, quite frankly. But I do like fighting games here and there. Uh, Samurai Warriors Five, not impressed. <laughs> I was not too happy to see that. That was just another uh, Dynasty Warriors clone, in my eyes. Uh, Mario Golf, not the not the kind of first party game I would have liked to see, um, but I was very happy to see Pyra uh, make 
an entrance to Super Smash Bros. I actually thought that we were going to get more Xenoblade Chronicles 2 DLC. And then they said, Rex, I got my invite to to Smash. Yeah. And he was like, whoa, that, yeah, that's that amazing, Pyra. That, that threw him, yeah. No, that, that was not even, that. it was a case of, oh, that's amazing. That, that is very much just like they recognize that they like crapping all over Rex. <laughs> because everyone keeps asking for Rex to be in Smash. And, uh, yeah. I mean, Rex is cool, but he... He does have the same weapon as Shulk already. You know, like they both mm-hmm. have the Aegis. And the Aegis is Pyra. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm looking at it as more just like, spoilers. I was looking at it more just as, um, what's it called? He already has a me costume. And it seems like the trend is usually if you already have a me costume or an assist trophy, you're not going to get in as a character. Okay, let's not, let's get rid of the assist trophy. How's that? And let's just bring in the character. Why would you take... No. <laughs> no. I would rather play a Shadow the Hedgehog than just I get, have him show up. I get that, but, like, that's probably not going to happen. I know, but a man can wish. Shadow right? more than likely would have just been an Echo Fighter anyway. Uh, no. Knuckles would have made more sense, and they already put him in as a trophy, too, so... They they did do that. Yeah, at best, you get Tails. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, we only we also only have one character from the sonic universe in smash yeah and that's probably how it's going to stay because you have officially two character slots left and that is it and that's it yeah sakurai has said he has no intentions for a third fighter pass so you have two more slots after this and that is it and i am still going to opine as much as nobody really wants it including me uh, i'm going to (laughs) opine that one of those slots is in fact going to be a pokemon from the latest generation I really hope not. That would nobody be wants slot. it. <laughs> nobody wants it, but that's probably going to happen. So if you want to get technical with it, you technically only have one slot left. The last slot. Who are we going to give it to? <laughs> Whoever you give it to, there's people going to be angry about it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you Some, can, you can, someone's going to hate it no matter what. Gi- you can give it to Crash Bandicoot. They're going to be like, what about Rayman? You can give it to Master Chief. People are just going to be like mad at that's a, that's a, a guns guy. Yeah. Uh, you can give it to someone with a sword. Naturally, everyone's going to get mad about that one. No, yeah, because we already have quite a, quite a lot of sword characters in there, understandably so. Uh, and I do get that. I would actually, I would like more of a long-range fighter, but somebody that more so deals with, like, magic and stuff, you know? Like, I kind the of... The RPG guy, again. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. The RPG guy. Sorry for having taste. And that is, and that is where <laughs> I feel like it's a lot of opposite. So, again, yeah, as we were talking about before we started recording, Video Game Donkey did a video on the Direct, right. and uh, he was in the exact opposite direction of you where he felt like there were way too many JRPGs. Mm-hmm. Keeping in mind that Donkey has historically not been a fan of JRPGs. Right. He's more of a platformer guy. So Yeah, that tends to be... A pretty big trend. I mean, a lot of people love platformers. I mean, for, I mean, a lot of Nintendo IP are platformers that to too. some degree. You know, what well, was it? Mario, Yoshi, Kirby. Yeah, those are all platformers. And they usually have announced uh, uh, platforms in the vast m- majority of directs, even if it is like the smaller events and stuff. And they also have uh, like indie showcases where you know it does tend to consist of mostly platformers. So I I do understand that frustration of not seeing any. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I'm not upset about it, though. Yeah, you're very much an RPG guy. Yeah. Uh, speaking for myself, yeah, trying. How do you feel? Okay, so yeah, uh, I thought the director was okay. Not great, not abysmal. It was okay. Same. Uh, the best thing of the show for me, and I know this is gonna sound like a condemnation of the direct, as opposed to a wow, the direct was pretty cool. It probably is Pyra and Smash. Really. Keep in mind, I have not played Xenoblade 2, so that's what I'm saying. Avoid the spoilers. But uh, <laughs> new Smash characters are always a positive for me. It doesn't matter who they are. Like, like, I know everyone was really down on, say, for example, Terry or Hero. I'm still cool with them. First of all, I like Terry. You know, it's, King of Fighters is cool. Um, but in general, it's just like a new Smash character is always a... Like, Smash is probably the one fighting game that I play. And I play a lot of fighting games. Mm-hmm. It is the one fighting game that I play where I have fun playing just about every single person on the roster. Really? Yes. Like... There's been countless times where I'm playing Smash and I'll just hit the random button. And whoever I get is who I get. And that's it. Interesting, interesting. Like, I have my mains. Mm-hmm. I main Pac-Man and Palutena. But, like, if you give me Diddy Kong, for example, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to like be like, oh, man, I got Diddy I have fun playing Diddy Kong. I okay. have fun playing Luigi. I have fun playing Ganondorf. 
Okay, maybe I don't have that much fun playing Jigglypuff, but that's because I'm bad at Jigglypuff. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fair. You already have a much broader uh, repertoire of characters that that you're good with and decent with. And that's also why. And that's also why, while you didn't do so, I had no problem getting the uh, fighter passes, both of them, because mm -hmm. like even if these aren't characters that I necessarily will play a whole lot, I still have no problem playing Piranha Plant every now and then, for example, or Steve from Minecraft, even though I'm really bad with him, <laughs> you know. Or Pyra, I have no problem with it. You know, Pyra's cool. I, I'm I'm down with more fighters. A lot of people complain about anime sword fighters. I'm sorry, there's a lot of anime sword <laughs> fighters in video games. Yeah, there are. Nintendo <laughs> has those IPs. That's just the, a fact of life. You know, yeah. you know, Final Fantasy is all anime sword fighters, and you know, you can't really get mad that you get oh, you're getting an anime sword fighter when you know you need to get a Final Fantasy. Right? Well, that's not entirely true. When it I comes know. To the, the hang, I hang know. on, hang on. We still have our brawlers. We have our magic people. You know. I know. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I do. I just think, wanted to be a snob for. A bit. I do think. I do think the more valid complaint yeah. about Final Fantasy rep in Smash, though, is you know only focusing on seven. Like I, I agree. That, that is a complaint I understand. Yes, I agree. Like as well. you know, I I fully see people saying you know why not get Titus from ten or whatever. Titus, whatever. <laughs> like Titus sounds better, but it is canonically pronounced Titus. Let's get the protagonist from 10 in there, you know? Like, I, I fully understand those arguments, but even then, he's still kind of a sword fighter. Just, he has a funky sword, that's all. <laughs> no, yeah, he is. He just has, but, like, um, a water sword. But uh, I feel yeah. like he would be fun, but it would make sense to have somebody, like, Noctis on there instead because he is a lot more recent. Yeah, he is the recent guy. And yeah. I mean, it also makes sense, though, to have one from a Final Fantasy game you can actually play on Switch, though. It's, I, yeah, that too. To be fair, like, In that case, it would be Tito. Because if you really think about it, because if you really think about it. Yeah. Joker remains an anomaly because up until this past week or so, this mm -hmm. month, yeah, there was no way to play as Joker in any other game besides Smash on the Switch. <laughs> Not <Now>, anymore. <laughs> now we have Strikers coming. Well, I actually but... got the deluxe edition of Strikers, which meant that I could play it four days early. I heard it's great. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. I, I heard it. I, I saw one person, you know, I have not played it. I saw mm -hmm. one person who was actually comparing it a lot to Seven Remake in terms of like using RPG elements in an action game. I I I like, disagree with the implementation, but I I, I think I understand how he would like make it's, that. It's very like because obviously it is you know a Dynasty Warriors game. Yeah, but it's a it's very much more like RPG heavy compared to some to a lot of the other ones. A lot of people have described it uh, as a as a Persona game. With Dynasty Warriors elements to it. Oh, yeah. Everything I've heard suggests that it's just Persona 5 too. Yeah. It, it is supposed to be a sequel, though the game is a lot shorter. I imagine. Than the original, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, you know, so that's just a bit of an anomaly. Anyway, other things on the Direct that I personally liked. Uh, Triangle Strategy does look interesting. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, there was that one first-person platforming game. It was all white when you have to, like you know, fight all the demons in heaven. It was, was it neon something? But neon white, I think. Yeah, neon white. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was interesting. I liked the character design. Like, I, I, think it, I think it can be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I was hyped over the Ninja Gaiden remasters. Ah, okay. I like, see. Like, if I have to pick a game that mm -hmm. I'm most excited for to have come out of that direct, it is that. And again, I know that's another condemnation, it sounds like, because it's like, oh, a bunch of 10-year-old, 10-plus-year-old games <laughs> being remastered for Switch. And that's the best thing to come out of the direct. And I'm like, I like Ninja Gaiden. Darn it, all right? Let's it is just back. a matter of preference, really. All right, Ninja Gaiden is Dark Souls, but good. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Like, we, we do need a mute button here because okay. you're, you, you've been expelled from, from this podcast. Yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Say your final words. <laughs> no. But uh, Splatoon 3, I, again, I'm, I'm not excited for it, but I'm down with it, especially... You know, depending on what they do with it, because it surely have to change quite a few things up if they're going to have a sequel like that right away. Yeah. On the same console. Yeah. It was one thing for Splatoon two to be, you know, a thing. You know, when the switch when we're moving from Wii U to Switch, mm -hmm. but now that we're going to still be on the Switch, it's like, what are you bringing new to the table here? Yeah. Like I'm thinking it's going to be more single player content based on how like they started off the trailer. Yeah, I mean, it is going to have a character creator. On <laughs> I mean, the game like. There's always been like a there's always been a customization thing like that. The way that they treated it, that they treated it this time did remind me a lot of Borderlands. Like yeah, that's what, that's what I'm thinking. Like, there's there's gonna be a lot of like, why is it like this? That's, okay. that's what I'm I'm expecting. There's gonna be like a more detailed story mode about 
Like, why is it like this? I want to think Octo Expansion was like some sort of like testing the waters for more single player content in Splatoon. Okay. And hopefully, hopefully it goes further because uh, Splatoon's campaigns, you know, the base campaigns for the past two games have very much felt like just tutorials for the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. And I think they can go a lot further than that, personally. Yeah. I feel like that's often the case with a lot of uh, shooters in general. Like, no, you don't think so? Because no. I feel like the multiplayer aspect tends to be the biggest. The multiplayer is the biggest aspect. But like, say, for example, because I, you, you, I know you're thinking a lot of like Call of Duty, for example. Right. Yeah, no, Call of Duty actually does have a story mode. It's not a great story mode in most of these you know, instances. It's very much just Michael Bay in video game format. But it's not like it's a tutorial for the multiplayer. You know, it's not. It's not. It it really just is like, it's just, here's a Hollywood movie that you can play. But if you don't want to play that, you can just go straight into the multiplayer. Gotcha. Or the zombies, whatever it is. Like, Call of Duty's single player is a thing. It's not a thing that most people are going to care about, but it is a thing. Mm -hmm. Splatoon, on the other hand, felt very much like, here's a few gimmicks that help you learn how to, like, really play the game well. And then just repeat gimmick a couple of times until you get to the next world yeah like it, it didn't feel very flush i did it did feel like a tutorial on how to play the multiplayer in terms of just mechanics for the game gotcha okay i see that sentiment uh i'm trying to remember what else was in the direct before we get to again the big thing that everyone's mad about <laughs> but i'm trying to remember <laughs> what else there was uh so there was uh uh skyward sword that was the big thing. Oh, that was? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm actually kind of happy to see Skyward Sword. So I never got to play it. I didn't get to play it either. And I'm not inherently upset about Skyward Sword coming to Switch. I'm not either. But we also all know the elephant in the room, why everyone's really mad about it, though. Yep, we do. $60 for a 10-year-old game that... So far, doesn't actually look that improved graphically. The only big difference really is 60 FPS. It doesn't look very sharp. I, de- I did notice that it honestly still looked like a Wii game. It looks very rough. Yeah. Um, in terms of not being... And, not, and yes, you don't have to use motion controls, but you have to use a thumbstick. And if you have controller drift, <laughs> now you have a problem trying to play this game. Yeah. Uh, but the big thing really comes down to... Everyone being mad because, you know, we had Mario 3D All-Stars. Yeah. Which came with three games for $60. Yeah. Everyone was complaining about that one because they didn't really do much with them. They were just emulated versions of the games. Mm-hmm. You know, Sunshine and um, 64 were running at 30 frames per second on hardware that was more than capable of supporting 60 with it. At that point, yeah, absolutely. Um, with those games. They, they was, it was a very shoddy put-together port, and they were charging $60 for it. And even, even when it comes to Galaxy, like, that could have ran at 60 as well. And even It wasn't? It didn't? I thought Galaxy ran at 60. I mean, it didn't in the Wii, as far as I'm aware. I'm going to have to get back on that. But in, either ca- in any case, those are three games mm. for $60, so basically $20 a pop. Yeah. Now we're talking about Skyward Sword, singular game. And I'm not a Zelda fin- uh, an aficionado. I'm not. <laughs> the only games I played were a about half or so of Ocarina of Time 3D, and then maybe a third of Breath of the Wild. And that's mostly because I just keep exploring rather than doing a story mode, like most people do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not a Zelda aficionado, but from everything fair. that I have heard over the years, it's that Skyward Sword is arguably the worst 3D Zelda game. Not even in terms of the motion controls, mm-hmm. which is what it seemed like a lot of people were complaining about, but even in terms of just the game apparently holds your hand a lot. It is a 50-hour game that has 20 hours of content because it keeps interrupting the flow for dialogue and you know tutorials and explanations. Oh, that's annoying. Apparently, it- it's very railroaded and tight corridored, kind of like a Final Fantasy 13 in case of what's something that you've experienced. Mm-hmm. Like, it feels, apparently, it's like that stuff as opposed to, say, the better ones like Wind Waker or Majora's Mask. I would have... Classic 3D ones. I said this on the live stream, but I would have loved to see the Twilight Princess and stuff. I think everyone would have preferred that, and I still don't rule it out. They didn't acknowledge the anniversary of Zelda very much, but again, I want to think that in June or July, whatever, whenever they do get around to Breath of the Wild 2 news, that they probably go all in on Zelda stuff, or maybe it's a full Zelda exclusive direct for the anniversary. 
Like sure. I can I can still believe that a Zelda 3D All Stars is going to happen. <laughs> the problem is All-Stars. the problem is if you do a Zelda 3D All Stars and you only make have, it limited <laughs> and you have three games, what do you do? Because there are four 3D Zelda games other than Skyward Sword that have to be that have to be uh, considered. You have Ocarina of Time, you have Majora's Mask, you have Wind Waker, you have Twilight Princess. What do you do? You see, do you put do you do they put all four of them on a collection? They're not going to. No. No, they wouldn't. They are not going to. If they're going to leave one out, I feel like it's going to be Ocarina of Time because we, are, no. we already saw that game on the 3DS. No, it's, no, they're not. You don't think so? No, Ocarina of Time is one of the greatest games of all time by everyone's accounts. There's no way, if anything, I can see Majora's Mask being left off. I'm a bigger fan of that happening. <laughs> I personally was not a big fan of that whole uh, time management system for a Zelda game. I haven't played these games, so... Oh, oh, no worries. I, 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 know, I, know, I know the whole thing about my Majora's Mask. I'm very curious to play it, but I have not played it. So, gotcha. in an ideal world, we see all four of them in a collection. Or actually, in an ideal world, we see all five in a collection, including Skyward Sword. But we don't live in an ideal world. No, we don't. And everyone's getting really mad about Skyward Sword selling for $60 on its own. How many of you are going to buy it anyway? <laughs> everyone's complaining about it. You're going to buy it anyway. I mean, I saw, I, I'm most saw, likely going to buy it. We saw Reddit posts of someone complaining about this issue and then saying, I am going to buy the game, but come on, guys. <laughs> like you're, you're, you're supporting the, the thing that you hate. <laughs> People are saying, oh, only Nintendo can get away with this. Yes, because Nintendo fans will still buy it. Mm-hmm. Now, am I going to buy a Skyward Sword on the Switch? In the future, maybe. Mm-hmm. Like, if there's a Black Friday sale for $40 and I have a surplus of money lying around to where it's no big deal or whatever, or I do enough surveys or something like that that I have a whole bunch of chump change lying around, Mm -hmm. or I sell some other stuff, sure. Okay. $60, absolutely not. I think I would still probably get it at 60 if I really wanted to play it. And here's the other the thing. Release. And here's the other thing to consider too. A big reason why I and, and you are willing to pay the money to play this is because we didn't play it before. Right. You have a lot of people who played these games before already, and like are going to complain about having to spend sixty dollars on it again, but then spend sixty dollars on it again anyway just because, or spend the money plus extra for those Joy Cons because they gotta have those Joy Cons. Oh jeez. <laughs> Honestly, I'm I'm very happy with my customized white Joy-Con. There is, of course, also the argument of, and we here at Tech Summit Podcast do not advocate for this necessarily, emulation. 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 Right. The same argument that was used when it comes to 3D All- Mario 3D All-Stars. Yeah. Emulation. Yeah. If you have the technology to do so and you want to emulate it, it is possible. We are not going to advocate for it, but it is possible. It is worth acknowledging, though, that that's how a lot of people have been playing these games for a while, especially for, for Super Mario 64, like speedrunners and stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. they do emulate the game because, I mean, how are you so, supposed to capture footage from a Nintendo 64 game? Uh, <laughs> do you? Can you use it? No, you cannot use it. I don't think you that. can. <laughs> so just do, just do 2006 YouTube, just point a camcorder at the TV. Yeah. It, and there you go. Just ask your your mom to hold it while you play. No, get a tripod. No, don't. I mean, it's not two two thousand and six. Put it on your textbooks. <sighs> Fine. Balance it on your textbooks. Fine. It just has to be a little bit, you know, like rough around the edges. There was like some that. other stuff in the direct that I'm trying to remember that I was thinking. Oh yeah, that's pretty neat. There was a lot, and also not really, in this direct. Uh, shoot. What else was there? <laughs> I think we should have had. Like that whole list of games up <laughs> for us to look at. <laughs> I know there was Animal Crossing content. That's pretty neat. No, the warp the warp pipes are actually pretty neat for Animal Crossing because you know it's easier transportation between you know around your island. That's actually a pretty uh, good thing, regardless if it's Mario or not. It is free. And it's also free. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm, there's some other stuff. Let's use the Tech Summit Research Station to quickly. Sure. I, I'm also going to, to do the same on my end. Uh, whenever my keyboard decides to turn on on this side, I'm going to go direct. Skyward Sword HD was the big thing that everyone was really focusing on. Splatoon 3 was also another thing because it was a big surprise. Right. Uh, yeah, Pyro from Smash. Uh, yes. Oh, Fall Guys. 
Ugh. A year after it came out, Fall Guys for the Switch. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Outer Wilds. That was a big one. Yeah. A lot uh, of people really like Outer Wilds. Outer Wilds was a pre- Oh, Monster Hunter Rise was also an, a, another yeah. one I'm pretty interested in getting. I actually don't really care for... Mo- I was never able to get into Monster Hunter. That That's fair. Um, Mon- no More Heroes 3, yeah. Yeah. No. People who like No More Heroes, <laughs> that's a very big deal. And for Star Wars them. fans, you get Star Wars Hunters. So there's, you know, that Me-topia. for you guys. Oh, this Some is people the big, were happy this is the big one. Yeah. DC Superhero Girls Teen Power. <laughs> that is the game of the show. That's it. It's over. Sony just lost. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> no. Um, we solved the issue of first party games. Or uh, exclusivity, rather. Oh, yeah. They did announce a uh, expansion pass for Hyrule Warriors. I know a lot of people uh, liked it. A lot of people like Hyrule Warriors. All right. right. More JRPG stuff. You're Bravely Default 2. Right, right. You, yeah. you know, like Actually, the good stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, Le- Legend of Mana as well, even though I'm, honestly, that was more yeah. form. Honestly, yeah. For me, I think the best thing game-wise would have been the Ninja Gaiden remasters just because I like Ninja Gaiden a lot. Um, and then mm-hmm. Pyro for Smash. That's, that's... I, I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people weren't. A lot of people weren't, but... Nah, I mean, come on. Pyro for Smash would be pretty cool, especially if you do get to play as for, Mithra. For, listen, for people who are tired of like anime sword fighters and waifus and stuff like that, I get it. I get it. Yes, point. I understand it. You know, I'm perfectly fine with it. I'm fine with any new characters. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm perfectly fine. Like, they can include Shrek if they really wanted to, and I'll be like, all right, fine. Okay, let's not go that far. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want him. I don't want him, but I'll take it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, Nintendo Direct, it was okay. You think it was great, basically. Or no. Pretty good. Okay. I think it was okay as well. You're still more positive on it than I am because you're, like, you got a lot more, like, JRPGs that you care about and stuff like that. Games that are interesting to you. Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, Monster Hunter was actually pr- pretty big. Uh, I would say that, um,. Uh, what was it? Uh, the triangle or <laughs> triangle strategy? Triangle strategy, Project Triangle strategy, name yes. still in the works. Um, that game was also pretty interesting. Have you tried the demo yet? Uh, no, actually, I haven't. I downloaded okay. it though. All right. Uh, and oh, we also got Hades physical. Yeah, yeah. Pretty neat. I'm and a lot of people loved Hades, so you Hades know, is a good game. If big. you somehow if you somehow like missed out on Hades at this point, that's a that's a great thing for people to have the collector edition with all the uh the soundtracks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But cool. honestly, besides that, that's really it. It is. A, it was a. It was a smaller direct, and I, I'm guessing a lot of people were just really like they were really focused on the fact that it was the first direct since like September of 2019, the first full size one. It was. Yeah, I mean, like it was a but, 50 minute direct. But at the same time, I do think we do see like more in the coming months. Again, E3, there's Nintendo's probably going to have something. Even if it's not a full size direct, maybe a direct mini, but they're going to have something. The fact that they didn't cover anything for the holiday season, I feel like, is a big sign for you know for things to come. You know what I mean? I I think so too, and I think that it is just going to be a matter of waiting. And I'm excited for yes. the holiday season. Yeah, but with yeah. that said, uh, this has run on to another long episode. We have two straight long episodes, relatively speaking. Yeah, I would say so. But uh, ah, such a peaceful tune. Yes. I miss uh I do not. I am so glad that it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness. I would like to thank the uh Fiverr artists who who made this track for us. Credit them. I don't remember the name <laughs> the username. <laughs> Figure out the name for next episode. Come on, damn it. Anyway, right. thank you all for listening to the Text on My Podcast episode. 29. 29. Yeah. If you guys are watching on YouTube, we have all that information down here at the bottom of the video. And if you are listening wherever podcasts are, uh, we have that stuff in the respective descriptions, you know? Look how uh, smoothly you delivered all of this because of the music. I stumbled over a little bit. I, I'm, I'm, I'm off to space right now. I'm just too excited well, about Ninja Gaiden, man. <laughs> and, and well, what I mean is that, like, like the tone just kind of calmed itself. I don't know. Like you're just a lot more calm in delivering that. When I usually... like, I like the 2000s. <laughs> in any case, <laughs> you know, Capri Sun commercial. But in any case, I, I feel right. <laughs> but with that said, yes, yes. Uh, my, this has been Francisco from and, Tech Summit and Chris. Yes, and we'll be seeing you all on episode 30. Good night. Travel. Well.